I believe mental happiness is. I believe that mental happiness is. I believe mental happiness is. I believe mental happiness is a state of mind that we all can achieve. My name is Marshala Thomas, and I was born on February 13, 1996, in Beaumont, Texas, to a beautiful woman by the name of Sandra Wembley. My mom tried to give me the best childhood I could ever have. She tried to protect me from the world, and she even tried to hold my hand every step of the way. She was and still is a very strong woman but as I grew in height and size I also grew more distant from her but why as a wise woman once said mothers always know best so why did I run away from the person who I know would have been there for me the truth is I had never been strong enough to admit to myself that I was molested by my dad for years. But was it molestation or was it rape? If you are forced to do anything sexual against your will, is that not considered rape? Do we choose to say a word that is less harsh for fear of mirroring the harshness that was once acted upon us? How could I possibly admit this truth to others? Am I a coward for waiting so long to speak up? I didn't speak up for myself because of fear, fear of death, fear of disbelief, fear of not having a solution, fear of not making it out alive. I didn't speak up because I convinced myself that he didn't know any better, and it was my fault for allowing it to happen. But today, and every day forward, I, Marshala Thomas, am taking responsibility and accountability for the happiness that I deserve. Life is too short, and in order for me to fully live up to my soul's purpose in this universe, I must step out of my comfort zone and figure out what is stopping me. What is stopping us from taking life-changing steps towards our mental state of happiness? And who knows? Maybe we can all heal ourselves together. My elders have always humbled me to pay homage to their unique journeys. So I myself set out on foot to ask them their thoughts on mental happiness. Hi, my name is Nina Wright. Um, I'm from Houston, Texas. I'm really nosy, um, but it comes from a genuine place. Uh, Name is Derek Blackwell. Um, I am from Victoria, Texas. Assistant Professor of Communication here at Prairie View. I have a two-year-old daughter. I have a wife. Uh, I'm a lover of like creative stuff, mm-hmm. so like art, music, film. Hello, my name is Teresa Dowell Vest. Originally, I'm from Charlottesville, Virginia. Uh, born and raised, and I am an adjunct instructor here at Prairie View a University. I'm also the director of film and television production here at the university. Uh, and uh, along with 50 amazing students, I run PBAMU TV. I believe mental happiness is when you can block out the whole world um, and see everything around you, recognize what you have, and you can just say, I'm happy. Um, I think social media now stops you from realizing what you have. Um, You can see all the things around you, but as soon as you open social media and you see somebody with something else, your happiness, you kind of drain. It's draining. 
like oh I want a puppy dog you have a puppy dog sitting right here it's the puppy dog that you wanted two years ago right but when you open social media oh I want that puppy dog but you just I mean you know like you and this puppy dog was happy five minutes ago but you have to want to be happy you can't want to be a Debbie Downer the whole time. That's something that that's something you can't control. I believe mental happiness is something that comes from within. Um, I think that we live in a world where happiness is oftentimes something we let other people define for us based on how they respond to us or how they view us or how they um, validate certain things in our lives but I think that when you live that way um, you're never happy because like it's it's so circumstantial and people are so constantly changing that to try to live up to some other person's standards as soon as another person steps in front of you now you got a new standard and so things are always changing and so you have to kind of find a way to know yourself and um, set your own standards for yourself, I think. I believe mental happiness is understanding that first you are not a bad person for feeling a need for help. You're not a weak person for feeling a need for help. Mental health, mental wellness means knowing, knowing when you need self-care. It's okay to withdraw and disappear from the world. Um, we're completely connected and, and um, plugged into a society that doesn't always care about our well-being. Everybody's opinions matter um, today, apparently, and a lot of times those opinions are hateful. Everyone's entitled to mental wellness. I think, I, I think there are a lot of people, people of color, men, who feel like um, they can't have mental wellness because it makes them look weak or it makes them look like um, they're not strong enough to support their, their families or, their, or themselves. And the very opposite is true. Trauma is a humongous role, especially if you don't know how to deal with it. It's very unfortunate, but um, it helps us out because sometimes it grows us up. It recognizes who your friends are, um, the people who are in your corner, your teachers and professors, um, and it gives you a moment um, because it's something that you've never felt before. But you can still find happiness in those traumatic moments. I mean, I think it plays a big one in that when you experience anything traumatic, part of what happens is a piece of that gets internalized and usually what happens is it makes a person either more cautious or maybe even more defensive and those are the kinds of traits and characteristics that make it a lot harder to achieve especially big things because if you are afraid or if you are defensive if you are skeptical of people or untrusting you know these are all kinds of the characteristics that for many people life experience instills these things in you right and so if these are things that are a part of the way you think and the way you interact with people then it's almost inherently going to set certain limits on what you can do from there you start to believe the world is a certain way um, and that negative outlook becomes your reality in some situations. I think trauma, when we experience trauma, uh, it tends, the damage of trauma is it makes us small. It makes us um, curl up and attempt to hide away to avoid the pain or to circumvent the pain uh, that we felt as a result of that trauma. Trauma can show up in a variety of ways, losing a loved one, can create a form of trauma that um, makes it difficult to bounce back from. One of the devastating moments in my childhood um, was when I lost my stepdad. Um, I lost him when I was in elementary school. I believe I was in like fourth grade, fifth grade. Um, 
But I remember waking up that morning to go to school. Um, at that time, you know, that we was ready to go to school, you know. Hey, lunch, snacks, hey. Um, so I was ready to go to school, woke up, you know what I'm saying, just to find my mom in the other room crying. And, you know, as a young child, you see your mama crying. Mm -hmm. That's that's something, like, it hit deep. She was, when she told us, she really couldn't even tell us. I think his picture was on the screen from the news. And she pointed towards the screen, we found out. But after that, that's when I feel like my life changed. I lost my grandfather a week after my birthday. And that's like a day that's like burned him to like my school. But it was like hard, because he was like our family rock. And he was sick, so we seen it coming. But then, you know, even when you see it coming, you don't really see yeah. it coming. Yeah. So it was like, we prepared ourselves. And then we got the phone call. And then it was like, shit. Not the day it's actually here. Um, in 2000, um, I had to deal with the personal recall and trauma of the fact that I'd been sexually molested. Um, I was I was raped at the age of four um, by someone who was trusted. Because I was so young when it happened, I grew up not certain whether it was a dream or a memory. So I just didn't talk about it. I had to seek therapy and, and work through it in a, in a way that still feels like it's ongoing work. What became less clear was what I could do for myself, self-help, self-care, mental wellness, in combating that history. I've worked beyond protecting the predator. Find something that you like. Um, I run. Some days when I run, I shed tears. Um, that's me leaving what happened behind so I can move forth to find my next piece of happiness. Mental happiness is, in my experience, really rooted in purpose. And if you have a sense of purpose in your life, and it becomes a lot easier to identify the steps you need to take to achieve happiness. And so the trick comes in where you ask yourself, well, what is my purpose, right? Don't put so much weight on immediate results. First, just breathe. Just breathe. Whatever you need to do in the quiet and in the still, do that first. It's okay if you're sad and you have your moments every now and then, um, but it's not supposed to be consistent. If you ground your identity and your purpose in something that's fleeting, then once that thing goes away, so does your sense of purpose and so does your happiness. If whatever you're going through or whatever you're trying to achieve feels difficult, keep going. Focusing on a purpose that lasts, a purpose that isn't here today, gone tomorrow, is the way to find that mental happiness at the beginning. Seek help. Find someone, maybe, it's a, maybe it is a professional, a therapist, a doctor of some sort. Or maybe it's a friend. Maybe it's a pet. Find someone to talk to, someone who will listen. Find anything that will bring you some joy. And that at least will set you on a, a course towards finding some, some mental happiness. Hello, my name is Marcella Thomas. I'm from Beaumont, Texas, and I believe mental happiness is a state of mind that comes from within. My name is Anthony Peterson. I'm from Dallas, Texas, and I believe mental happiness is a result of self-reflection. My name is Lamaya Ferlina, I'm from St. Paul, Minnesota, and I believe that mental happiness is wholeness within yourself. My name is Jure Beach, I'm from Arlington, Texas, and I believe that mental happiness is everything. Hello, I'm John Shea Knudsen, I'm from Atlanta, Georgia, and I believe mental happiness is staying true to yourself. Hi, my name is Carrington Allen. I'm from Kansas City, and I believe that mental <clears throat> happiness is freedom, freedom of mind, freedom of heart, and freedom of spirit. 
I'm sorry. It's just okay. I'm Paige Thomas. Um, I'm from Houston, Texas, and I believe mental happiness is mental freedom. My name is Leon Brown. I'm from Galveston, Texas, and I believe mental happiness is loving yourself first. I'm Tamara Wabakizi. I'm from Houston, Texas, and I believe mental happiness is believing in yourself. My name is Madeline Brown. I'm from Houston, Texas, and I believe mental happiness is self-peace. My name is Isis Thomas. I'm from Missouri City, Texas, and I believe mental happiness is the key to understanding yourself. My name is Chaz Nolan. I'm from Beaumont, Texas, and I believe that mental happiness is self-satisfaction and self-appreciation. I'm Dijon, and I'm from Colleen, Texas, and I believe mental happiness is accepting every part of yourself. We as human beings are capable of miraculous things. But the question is, what do we honestly tell ourselves that we are capable of every day? Forget what our parents have told us, what our friends have told us, what strangers have told us. What do you tell yourself every day? Well, my name is Marcella Thomas. And I graduate from Prairie View A&M University on December 16th, 2018. I don't know what the next step is for me, but I do know that I am embarking on a mental happiness journey and I am ready for my journey. But the question that remains is, are you?